Hello everybody, welcome to our lesson. Today's topic is the magnetic force on moving charges. This is the goal of the lesson. At the end of the lesson you'll be able to describe and calculate the force acting on moving charges and describe the motion of charged particles in a magnetic field. From previous lessons we know if a current starts to flow through the road the wire will experience a force due to the magnetic field as shown in the picture. And current it's the result of motion of charged particles. And it's obvious that the beam of charge would also experience a force due to the magnetic field. In fact, the magnetic force acting on the wire is because it's exerted on the moving charged particles. And it means that if you add all the tiny forces acting on each charged particle at a particular segment of wire, we get the magnetic force acting on a current carrying wire. And how to calculate this force? To find the force on each charge in a conductor, we must divide the magnetic force by the number of charges in, a, in this particular segment of area. And the force on each charge will be total force, the force on a current carrying conductor, divided by the number of charges. And the force on a current carrying conductor from previous lesson, we know that it is multiplication of the current length of the wire and the magnetic field strengths. By substituting this into the equation, we get this kind of equation, ILB over N. And electric current, I, it's the amount of total charge over an interval of time delta Q over delta T and the total amount of charge is the number of charge times the charge of each particle so delta Q is equals to N times Q where Q is the charge of each particle and the length of wire L we can find by multiplying the speed of charge times the time it travels Substituting all this into the equation for force, we get this. And here, the number of charges will cancel each other, and also interval of times also cancel each other. And we have only charge, velocity, and the magnetic field. And finally, this is the magnetic force acting on each moving charge. And we have derived this from the force acting on a current carrying wire. So the force depends on three factors. The stronger the charge, the stronger the force. And the faster the charged particle, the stronger the force. And the force will get stronger if magnetic field strength also gets stronger. And for the charge, it's not necessary to be inside the wire to feel a magnetic force. Any charged particle which is in free motion in the magnetic field would feel on it a magnetic force. The direction of the magnetic force for positive charges can be found using second right hand rule. In this case, the thumb will show the direction of velocity, fingers will show the direction of magnetic field, and the palm will show the direction of magnetic force. And this is identical as for the current carrying wire. Instead of direction of the current, we use here direction for the uh, charged particle, for the velocity. If we change the direction of the magnetic field, the force also changes. See here, we have two type of magnetic fields, this is into the page and this is out of the page and we see the opposite forces. So this also can be found using second right hand rule. The direction of the magnetic force for negative charges 
is in the opposite direction to that for positive charges as shown in the picture. So if you use right hand rule, you just reverse your palm. If the magnetic field direction makes an angle with the direction of the velocity, the perpendicular component of the magnetic field produces the force shown in the picture. The force can be calculated using the following relationship, where alpha is the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field. So this is some kind of universal equation, and we call this Lorentz force. And according to this equation, the charge can have three situations. Magnetic force is maximum if the velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field, as shown in the first picture. And magnetic force decreases as the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field decreases. And magnetic force is zero if velocity and field lines are parallel. So there is no force from the magnetic field. And these three situations have actually different types of motion. Let's start from the easy one. In the third case, the charged particle has no force exerted from the magnetic field. So basically, the charge will move straight. It will have a linear motion. But what about the other situations, first and second? So let's study deeply the first situation. So magnetic force on a moving charge is always perpendicular to the velocity. So the magnet magnitude of the velocity, that is speed, doesn't change. Since the velocity is constant, it can be said the kinetic energy of the charges are constant, which means magnetic force is not doing work. So the Lorentz force is not doing work and the charged particle will perform circular motion. We've got our answer if the velocity and the magnetic field lines are perpendic perpendicular the motion will be circular. In uniform circular motion a mass connected to the end of a string turning in a circle experiences a force perpendicular to the direction of velocity, causing the object to follow a circular path. In this case, the magnetic force is the centripetal force that keeps the charge turning in a circle, as shown in this picture. So you must note the similarities between these two situations. The radius of the curved path can be found as follows. Magnetic force, as we said, exerted on a moving charge is equal to the centripetal force of the charge. By substituting what we know for the magnetic force and centripetal force, we get this kind of equation. This is magnetic force, this is centripetal force, and velocity will cancel each other here, and we have instead of v square, only one v. And if we rewrite the equation in order for the radius, we get this. Finally, this is the equation which describes the radius of a charged particle's path. From the equation, we can say that the radius of a charged particle path depends on mass, speed, amount of charge, and the strength of the magnetic field. So basically, the radius is proportional to the mass and velocity. The bigger the mass and velocity, the longer the radius. And radius of a charged particle is reversely proportional to the charge and the magnetic field strengths. So the bigger the charge or the magnetic field, the smaller the radius. We can also find period of a motion. So you know the period of motion is found the circumference of the circle over the velocity. 
and by substituting the given for the radius we get this kind of expression and here velocities will cancel each other and we have finally the equation for the period of a circle let's go back to these three situations remember this so we know what type of motion charged particles perform when velocity and magnetic field is perpendicular it will have a circular motion and we also know what type of motion when velocity and magnetic field is parallel to each other charge will have linear motion finally we need to understand what type of motion will charge perform when a charged particle has a velocity parallel to the magnetic field basically what type of motion the charge perform when charged particle enters the magnetic field at an angle so charged particles will move on a path called helical path velocity here has two components as we said the perpendicular component the, this is perpendicular to the magnetic field and the parallel component to the magnetic field so distribution of these components will shape the helix actually if you look from the cross-sectional plane you see a circular motion if you look from the top view you will see circular motion and the side view will give you a sinusoidal motion now how can we find the radius of this helix and the pitch of a helix pitch it is the distance between the steps of a helix or the distance between two circles of a helix so it can be found as follow so this is actually the same equation for the situation when velocity was perpendicular to the magnetic field and here we use perpendicular velocity so you can memorize this as follows to find radius of a motion in the magnetic field you must use always perpendicular velocity to the magnetic field and to find pitch you must multiply the parallel velocity to the period of a circle substituting the uh, givens for the velocities we can rewrite the equation as follows here v sine alpha is the same with the perpendicular velocity and the parallel velocity it is v cosine alpha and here 2 pi m over qb it's the period of a circle so this is the end of the lesson i hope you enjoy our video if you like it please subscribe and share